So I've already talked about uh, how we turned from stateful hash, sig hash based signatures into stateless hash based signatures. But in this video, I want to explain a little bit more how we go about this bottom layer in these well, different, different trees where I've been talking about few time signatures. So let's first understand what the problem is. In the Gold Rush Levin idea, where remember each level down was signing, so it was trees of height one. So each, uh, well, local tree was just height one. So we're having lots and lots of one time signatures. The reason that we needed such a gigantically wide tree is that by the birthday paradox, if you're having n different leaves, an attacker has a 1 over square root of n chance of hitting the same leaf twice. Well, since these are one-time signatures, it will be really, really bad to hit the same leaf twice. So it must have so many leaves that the chance of hitting the same one twice is negligible. And that typically means 2 to the minus over 28. And since it's a square root attack, well, we need the square of 2 to 128, meaning 2 to the 256 many leaves. That's a large number of leaves. Now, each of these leaves, well, we pick the location by the hash of the message. So the message comes in, it says, ah, I need to use this as the, as a base, and then your signature would be including the path to the root of the tree. That's why the signature is so large. But the reason is that each signature must be used only once. So what we want to go for is something which is called a few time signature instead of a one time signature. So in a few in a few time signature, we first need to redefine how our hash function works. And so what we have here is well a hash function instead of having bits as entries, we now have numbers between zero and t minus one. Okay, so if t, might, if t is a power of 2, you can just say it's 16, then you're taking 4 bits at a time. So the hash function hasn't changed so much, but we're interpreting it in a different way. So each of these positions now has t different values, and okay, we're grouping log base 2 of t bits together. The collision is still the same meaning, so it means that you're getting exactly the same h sub i. And that means, well, the bits would be the same. The numbers, more t, not the same. So the likelihood of collisions is the same, but now with this new definition of, of h, we can introduce a term which is called R subset resilience. So what is R subset resilience? Let's start with having R different messages. So we're having m1, m2, m3 till mr. So this is what the messages come in, and then let's assume we're having for each of those the output of the hash function. So now we have to have double indices, and so I'm using the first index, the j here, to indicate which method message this was. So this is, j is a number between 1 and r. And the second index, well, like up here in the definition of the hash function, that is just giving the horizontal position between 0 and k minus 1. So it's the first block, the second block, etc. And this hash function satisfies that it has R subset resilience. If when you're given these R inputs, then you have a negligible probability of finding some M prime so that you can mix and match the output of the hash function. So mix and match means, well, there is an M prime, you're computing the hash of it, and then each of those hi prime is a part somewhere in one of these h of m. So each of these h primes is in the set that is given here. So it is for one of the j messages, uh, one of the r messages, it's one of the k components. And so if your hash function is such that this probability is negligible, then the hash function satisfies the notion of our subset resilience. Okay, and so if you're using a signature scheme using this hash function, then instead of having a one-time signature, you're having something which you can use 
for each subleaf of the key for R plus one signatures. If this isn't fully clear, that's fine because there's an exercise on the, on the uh, exercise sheet. Okay, so let's look at how such a few times signature, in this case, an R plus one times signature scheme is defined. So we're looking at horse, which is the hash to obtain random subsets, which is the basis of horse used in swings. So similar to what I explained already, our hash function now has multiple components and we're grouping um, them in log base two of t together. So this hash function looks just the same as on the previous page. And again, for simplicity, assume that t is a power of two. Okay, so we're getting from arbitrary long messages to messages which have k positions, each of which is a number between zero and t minus one. We also will need a one-way function. But this one-way function is uh, on L bits to L bits, so it doesn't have to be compressed. You can still use the hash function, but you could also use something else. Okay, and so then we're picking for the key generation, very similar to what you've seen in Lambert or in Winternets. We're picking some few strings. So these are L bit strings, and we want to have T of those. Okay, remember t, that's the number well, between 0 and t minus 1, is what each of these entries are. And so what we're getting here is the si are the pre-images under f of something which will constitute our public key. So our public key has only t components. So my 16 was a very small example, it's definitely not confusing here. So we're having t components here. Those are the images under f of the secret key. So these are the pre images And then we want to sign a message where we first compute the hash of this message. And again, this is the special hash function where we're having k components, each being a number between 0 and t minus 1. And then the signature, we're looking up what is this value. So h sub 0 is, say, 7. And then what we're issuing as the first component is s sub 7. So whatever this value is as a number between 0 and t minus 1, that's the index. So we go into our secret key and give them different components. And all this one might appear here, so there's no ordering. And they might appear twice. If you have released S0 already, you might release it again, because this position might require another S0. Okay, so to verify then, the verifier computes the same hash function. Here. And then they need to check that these s values were generated correctly. So for each of the s values which were revealed, they compute the function, well, the one way function, it's f, and then check that this actually matches the corresponding part of the public key. And so you're looking that, well, the h0 is matching, so it's the right number and you're matching that up with the piece of the public key. So somebody couldn't just rotate things or whatever because then it wouldn't be the correct correct value for the hash function and they need to know the pre-image. So for each of the ones that an attacker wants to get, uh, each of the uh, pieces hi that appear in the hash of the attacker message, they do need to know the pre-image, the s value. But it could come from a different position. Okay, so this was just a short summary of an example, namely the horse two-time signature scheme, to show you how one can have something which doesn't crumble instantly if you have one signature revealed. But as you can see on the exercise sheet, there is always some security degradation, but it's not as bad.